of the principles of our religion, it is a maxim, it is a rule, that we learn al-jaza'u min jins al-amal. The reward or the punishment is going to be in accordance with the deed that we do. Or there's another maxim, kama tadinu tudan. As you do unto others, it will be done unto you. Now these words or phrases are not from the hadith, but they're from the statements of our early scholars. And they derive them from many verses in the Quran and many a hadith that demonstrate this reality. As you do unto others, it will be done unto you. And according to your deeds, your rewards and punishment will be given in the same area, in the same way that you do to others, that is how the reward is going to come. And there are many, many evidences for this. Of them, for example, I'll quote you a few ahadith that we can inshallah understand this principle from. Our Prophet sallallahu said that Allah azza wa jal will continue to help his servant as long as the servant is helping others. When you help others, Allah will help you. In another hadith, in the same concept, Allah will fulfill the needs of his servant as long as his servant is fulfilling the needs of other people. So when you fulfill the need of somebody, Allah will fulfill your need. When you help somebody, Allah will help you. In yet another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever covers the faults of his brother, Allah will cover his faults on the day of judgment. As you do, it will be done unto you. So when you find the mistake of another brother, you have two options. You can be the gossiper, the tattletale. You can be that guy on Facebook who loves to talk about drama and tragedy. And you can be that person. Or you can say, it's none of my business. Why should I go tell other people? Let me cover up his fault. If I need to say anything, I'll go to him directly. Give him advice directly. Why should I cause a scandal? Cover it up. And when you cover up the faults of your brother, what will Allah do in response? On the day of judgment, Allah will protect you from your own faults in front of the other people. Allah will shield your faults. In yet another hadith, our Prophet wasallam said that whoever gives clothes to his brother, Allah will give him clothes on the day of judgment. Because we will be resurrected naked, barefoot and uncircumcised as the hadith says. And Allah will give us clothes on the day of judgment. We want to be clothed early. We want our awrah to be covered. So when we donate to the poor and we help them to cover themselves, what will be the reward back to us? We will get the clothes that we want on the day of judgment. And in yet another evidence for this, one of the most amazing incidents that really demonstrates al-jaza'u min jins al-amal is the famous incident of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an and during the slander of his daughter Aisha. We are all aware that his relative Mislah. And you know, we are all aware, by the way, this is human nature, that within a close family, shaitan comes and causes issues. The reality is, dear brothers, as we are all aware, that jealousy is higher among siblings and cousins than among strangers. Shaitan brings about a bigger issue between immediate family than between complete strangers. So for whatever reason, shaitan caused this Sahabi, who otherwise was good, to slip. And Mislah, a cousin's son of Abu Bakr, his relative, said something he shouldn't have said about Aisha radiallahu anha. And Mislah, being a poor person, was being helped by Abu Bakr as-Siddiq financially. Every month, he would give sadaqah to Mislah. And famously, Abu Bakr remarked, Wallahi, I will never give another penny to Mislah because he said something about my daughter. And who can blame him? But you see, Abu Bakr is not like me and you. Abu Bakr is a role model radiallahu anha. Abu Bakr is a paragon. Abu Bakr radiallahu anha. All the eight doors of Jannah will be calling him by name. He needs to be given the example that we can look up to. And so, to show us the maqam of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, Allah revealed verses in the Quran directed to him that we recite to this day. These verses are written for, revealed for Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. And Allah says to Abu Bakr, very explicit in Surah An-Nur, you can read it yourselves. Do not give a qasam by Allah that you shall never give another penny, another dirham or charity to وَلَا يَأْتَلِي أُولُ الْفَضِّ مِنْكُمْ وَالسَّاعَةِ أَنْ يُؤْتُوا أُولُ الْقُرْبَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْمُهَاجِنَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Mistah was faqir, a muhajir and a relative. He had all three of them combined. وَالْيَعْفُوا وَالْيَصْفَحُوا أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Turn aside from this mistake and forgive. Don't you want Allah to forgive you, O Abu Bakr? Abu Bakr as-Siddiq is being told in the Quran, don't use my name to say, Wallahi, I'm never going to give Mistah another penny. For he is faqir and miskeen, and he is a muhajir, he's done hijrah, and he is your relative. But then how about the sin? How about the slander? How about the backbiting? Wal-ya'fu wal Turn away and ignore what he has done. Don't you want Allah to forgive you? So Abu Bakr said, indeed, I want Allah to forgive me. 
Then he gave a qasam that he will give him a stipend as long as he lives. And he made a kafara for the previous qasam and he gave him a stipend until he passed away. From all of this we gather, if we want Allah's forgiveness, we need to forgive other people. If we want Allah's help, we need to help other people. If we want Allah's rizq, we need to share his just that he's given to us with those amongst our friends and relatives that need it as we do unto others. It will be done unto us.